So she comes in, uh, she was actually just struck by a car. So auto, automobile versus pedestrian. And she's moving purposefully, but very agitated. In the shock room, her heart rate 70, blood pressure is 180 over 98. Um, pupils, uh, right pupil now is actually much larger than the left. And on your assessment, uh, so this is different from what they found in the sealed her field. Her DCS is now six. So it went from 13 to six. She's only now just um, withdrawing from pain. So you want to, uh, or, 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 or flexing from pain. So you want to, at this point, um, do your ABCs. Um, you want to uh, get through your trauma evaluation. You, uh, someone notes that she has an open tibbit fracture. They also do a FAST, which is an ultrasound test of the abdomen to look for uh, free fluid, which is negative. And then she gets that intubated. All right, so everyone wants to get a CT of the head and I think that's the correct answer. For some reason, um, I've been asked this multiple times, when I see, when a patient comes in with a blown pupil uh, and a poor exam uh, that was previously uh, okay, um, some trauma surgeon or something goes and says, shouldn't you just put a burr hole in or something like that? And if you were in the middle of nowhere and you had no access to, and you, you weren't in a hospital and you had no access to any imaging, then I think that would be the right answer. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, you're doing what you, you need to do to save the patient's life. But in any urban setting, especially any hospital setting, get a CT of the head first. There can always be false, false localization with a blown pupil. Um, as a, you can get with a hernia, some several herniation syndromes where you can have a impingement on Kernahan's notch and a, uh, a contralateral um, third nerve palsy, for example. So you, you don't want to, you, if you can get imaging, safely get it. So the airway secure, we get our CT head. And this is what, you, this is what it shows. So we have a large right-sided acute subdural hematoma with a, a lot of midline shift. So what do you guys want to do about that? Now you're in the scanner and you got to decide what to do. All right, so let's take the patient's stat to the OR. I think this is a, a no brainer at this point. Um, and the reason why I put this case in is because we were just talking about placing EVDs for traumatic brain injury. However, um, in this case, uh, to relieve the patient's intracranial hypertension, we're not talking about CSF flow diversion. We're not talking about placing an EVD to drain CSF. We need to get this huge uh, mass lesion out of, the, out of the head, right, to make room. So um, there are, uh, in addition, Brain Trauma Foundation guidelines for this as well, um, which are mostly consensus. And uh, so a lot of you will hear that a acute subdural greater than a centimeter with a greater than five millimeter midline shift should be evacuated as soon as possible. Or in a patient who with a very poor GCS with uh, slightly um, uh, less uh, subdural thickness and midline shift with uh, a rapidly decreasing uh, mental status should also be taken. Um, and just briefly to go over that. Um, so, um, you know, you'll have uh, your patient positioned, usually supine with the head turned. Uh, in this diagram, they have them pinned. Um, we don't pin for our trauma cranies uh, ever because it's just a waste of time and also um, provides um, less flexibility for the scalp. And uh, you make your reverse question mark incision, large craniotomy, Again, in, a, in this situation, in an acute, with an acute clot, you don't want a small acute craniotomy because what you're gonna find is this huge gelatinous mess underneath. So this is a case that I did um, not too long ago, huge clot that we're just kind of sweeping off here. And then once we get it off, you find this, you know, the surface of the brain here, um, your large dural opening. And at this point, uh, is a good point to think about placing your EVD or you can close up and place it afterward if the brain is uh, swelling. You decide whether or not you put the bone back on, leave the bone off. These are all conversations for another time. But in general, once you get the subdural out and the brain looks okay and it's not swelling out, you can put the bone back on. Uh, usually leave an EVD. And if you're going to place an EVD, you can place it through a point called pain's point, uh, which on the left side, unfortunately, goes straight through Broca's area. So you don't want to do that necessarily. Um, but what you can do is take that same point and go a little bit more medial um, and place it through the, the, front, the uh, middle frontal gyrus or
everyone. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.